Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hi, this is Zafar Iqbal. Welcome back to my channel. In this English grammar lesson, I will teach you the fourth part of the part of speech, verb, in detail with definitions, examples, and examples in the sentences. In this lesson on verb, there is not a single definition of the verb, but a lot to understand the verb that what is its function, role in the sentence. I hope that student students will understand easily. So let's start. By the end of the lesson, you will have a clear idea of a way to use verbs. So let's start. But before the start of our lesson, if you like this video is interesting and developmental, so please don't forget to subscribe, thumb up and comment. Kindly leave a remark underneath. I love to hear what you need to say. Thank you. Now, starting from the definition of the verb. A verb is a word or an aggregate of words that indicates action or a kingdom of being or condition. A verb is the part of sentence that tells us what the situation plays. Verbs are the hearts of English sentences. Verbs are crucially part of any sentence. Without verbs, you cannot specific on entire thought. A verb is the main aspect of a sentence. No sentence can be completed without a verb. A verb is the moment phrase of the sentence. It tells us what a person or factor does or possesses. Verbs are the maximum vital aspect of any sentence. These phrases speak approximately the movement or the kingdom of any noun or challenge. This way that verbs display what the difficulty is doing or what's the kingdom of scenario of the problem. Verbs describe what someone or element does or what is happening. Verbs are words that supply the concept of motion, of doing something. A verb is one of the main element of a sentence or theory in English. In fact, no sentence or a theory is without a verb. That's how essential this action, a part of speech is. Now, types of verbs. Main verbs, auxiliary verbs, helping verbs, finite verbs, infinite verbs, transitive verbs, intransitive verbs, regular verbs, irregular verbs, and modal verbs. Now we will take one by one that what is the main verb, auxiliary, etc., etc. Now, starting from the main verb, the main verb is very important in the sentence. The main verb suggests presence of the subject or what action he, she has taken. The main verb 
can be used alone in conjunction with a helping verb. Main verb is the action verb of the main clause. A main verb includes most words. The main verbs are the action words in a sentence. The main verb is the head of a verb phrase. Every sentence has a subject and a verb. The main verb is the verb in the sentence that is expressing the action. Examples in sentence. Stand alone. Who? The main verb. Number one. He goes to the university every day except Sunday. Now, in this sentence, goes in the main verb and it stand alone. Number two. Hamid bought a shirt yesterday. Bought is the main verb. The main verb in combination with an auxiliary verb. In this sentence, we will explain main verb and auxiliary verb in combination. Number one, this main road was built in our town last year. In this sentence, was auxiliary verb and built is the main verb. Number two, Hamid and his friend are going to the garden. In this sentence, are is the auxiliary verb and going is the main verb. Now, our second uh, verbs, finite and non-finite verbs. Finite verbs. Finite verbs which have the present or the past form are called Finite verbs. A finite verb is the main verb in a sentence. It's the root word that derives the rest of the sentence. Almost every verb within the English language can be used in a finite verb as long as it has three features in a sentence. Number one is subject. Number two agreement with the subject. Number three, a tense, present or past. Regardless of the sentence is long or short, there is always relatively one finite word. An example, my brother went to university to become, become a doctor. Brother is subject, went is finite word in the past tense. Become is non-finite verb. Now, non-finite verbs. Non-finite verb. Verbs in any other form. Infinitive is ing, ing, or ed are called non-finite verb. Non-finite verb, if a verb doesn't have a subject or a tense and it is part of verb, it is a non-finite verb. Difference between finite verb and non-finite verb. Finite verb forms show tense, person, and number, whereas non-finite verb forms do not show tense, person, or number. Now, auxiliary verbs, Helping verbs. A helping verb is also known as auxiliary verb. An auxiliary verb, helping verb, is used with a main verb. Every sentence has at least one verb in it. There are two main verbs. Action verbs are used to describe activities which might be manageable and linking verbs are used to describe situations. Both motion verbs and linking verbs can accompany auxiliary verbs inclusive of three primary ones, do, be, and have. Now, the forms of auxiliary verbs in do, 
do, did, does, will do. And the forms of auxiliary verbs have, has, have, had, will do. Forms of auxiliary verbs in be, is, am, are, was, were, been, been, will be. Helping verbs are defined as verbs that help the main verb in a judgment by extending its meaning. An auxiliary verb helps the main verb of the sentence. An auxiliary verbs cannot stand alone in sentence. They have to be connected to the main verb to make sense. A helping verb is also known as auxiliary verb. A helping verb or auxiliary verbs are used together with main verb. Now, transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. Before we go to learn transitive verbs and intransitive verbs, we have to learn phrasal verbs which will be very helpful to know if they are transit verbs or intransitive verbs. Now what are phrasal verbs? Phrasal verbs are consist of two or three words. In example, uh, what is phrase? A group of words with, with a subject or a verb making no complete sense is called a phrase. Example, bag and baggage. In the corner. A clear blue sky. Turning away, etc, etc. A transit verb is a verb used with a direct object. An intransitive verb is a verb used without a direct object. What is direct object? The word that comes at once after the verb will be its object. The object will tell us who or what obtain the action. All verbs can be either transitive or intransitive. When a word is transitive in the number, it has an object. When a verb when a word is intransitive, it does not need an object. Transitive words. Examples in sentences. Number one, I want pizza. Number two, he carried the bag. Intransitive words, examples in sentences. Number one, he ran. Number two, the line roared. Now, regular words and irregular words. Most verbs in English are regular words. This means that we can be confident with the forms they take because they follow a predictable pattern. Those words that doesn't, that don't follow the basic rules are called irregular verbs. Regular verbs form their past tense and past participle by adding ed. If the verb already ends with an e, then simply add a d. The present participle of regular verbs is formed by adding ing to the end of the root. Examples of regular verbs in their various forms. Cuff, cuffed, cuffed, cuffing. Abuse, abused, abused, abusing. Advice, advised, 
advised, advising, agree, agreed, agreed, agreeing, arrange, 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 arranging. Example in sentence of regular verbs. We really like the mutton we cooked last night. Have you finished your job? If the verb ends in a consonant Y, change the Y to I and add it ED. Example, study, studied, studied. On the other hand, the past tense and past participle of irregular verbs vary. An example, arise, arose, arisen, awake, awoke, awoken, become, became, become, buy, bought, bought. There are mainly three types of irregular verbs. Number one, verbs in which all the three forms are the same. An example, put, put, put. Number two, verbs in which two of the three forms are the same. Sit, sat, sat. Verbs in which all three forms are different. An example, drink, drank, drunk. Now, model verbs. Model verbs are very vital in the English language. Model verbs are used with different verbs to express various such things as possibility, obligation, etc. Model verbs are verbs that combine with some other verb and are used to show possibility, aim, responsibility, and necessity. Model verbs are auxiliary verbs and are called helping verbs. List of model verbs. Can, could, may, might, must, shall, should, will, would, or to. Now, we'll take him one by one. Can, model work. Concept, ability, permission. Example, can I have your pen? Second model verb, could. Concept is past ability. An example, he could play football. May, concept is permission. An example, may I come in? Might, concept is possibility in the past. Where is my key? You might have left an office. Must, concept is possibility, obligation. You must study at university. Shall, concept is position. Shall I call you? Should, Concept is advice. Example, you should walk to work. Will. Concept. Wish. I will give you some money to spend. Would. Concept. Wish. We are going to the cinema. Would you come? Yes, I would. Or to. Concept, strict recommendation. Example, you are ill, you ought to go to bed for rest. Now, this lesson is end. And at the end of every lesson, be ready to learn and watch the next video. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.